What? Why am I alive? <gasps> you are a toy. You belong to Bonnie. These are your friends. Oh, oh, hey. Hey. Our goal from day one is to make this movie a continuation of the, the story for Woody and to expand the world at the same time. It's an interesting line to walk for a sequel. You want to give people what they are familiar with and what they love. Jesse, Ham, Buzz, Bo, Rex, Potato Head. Ah! Hey, watch it, what buddy. What do we do? But not in the same way. So that's what we've done here is just to show here's a continuation of Woody's story, but it's a different way that he didn't even see coming. You need help with that. No, no, I got it. <laughs> We always want the audience to connect with these characters, and I think seeing our world from the toy's point of view is something that's so unique to Toy Story. There's thousands of objects, so I think on the IMAX screen, you're seeing this larger scope. In the art department, we kind of start from scratch, so we literally have a blank piece of paper, and it starts with research and then drawing. So story has already kind of come up with what is going to happen, and it's our job to design and figure out what this place is going to look like. There's an unbelievable amount of detail that you're going to be able to see on an IMAX screen in this movie. In terms of animation, it was really important to, to remember how big they were. For instance, you know, Bo Peep is 10 inches tall, and so her movements would be a lot quicker than, say, you or I, like an, uh, an average size human. So really playing with the timing, like how quick she could move was, was really fun. Early on, the art department is working more with story and directly with the director to craft and figure out what these toys are. You know, we're doing a lot of research. We're going to antique stores. We're going to carnivals. We rented an RV and had meetings and hung out in the RV. Uh, it was fun. So that research is a big part of the early uh, part of our process. Through the process, we're finding the film. We don't always exactly know how it's going to end up, but through the process of making it, we kind of discover it. I think a lot of people don't know how uh, chaotic behind the scene and the making films can be messy, but at the same time, very exciting. In pre-production, we're really concentrating on model testing the models and making sure that they, you know, can move freely without what we call breaking, which is, you know, the, the characters just don't look correct. And then we do a bunch of research. We pull tons of video reference of who we think the characters are and really discover the characteristic traits of each character. And then we sometimes pull clips from movies or TV shows with that character's voice, for instance, Annie Potts for Bo Peep. And we'll animate a scene, it's just a test scene, we'll never be in any movies, but using that audio clip. And that's just testing to see what does she look like when she's talking and moving and jumping. Then after all this testing is done and the, the character's ready to be animated, we apply her in, in shots in the movie. I know the perfect toy to help. Duke Kaboom, Canada's greatest stuntman. Huh. Oh yeah. Huh? Yes. Uh -huh. He's posing. Yeah. Duke, we need Hold to- Hold on, one more. Oh yeah. Scale's really important to our world because uh, these characters are, you know, a foot tall or so. All the textures and materials and objects they interact with are all tools to kind of help explain the world that they're in and the scale that they're in. Everything is down low, everything is up close, and I just imagine seeing it on the biggest screen possible. I'm still seeing things that I haven't yeah. even noticed before. You'll notice in the antique store there's uh, a lot of great dust and cobwebs and so forth. And those things, we work really hard at those because they deliver the believability of the characters in that world. There's also so many Easter eggs that we've got in this movie within the antique mall. And I think if you see this on an IMAX screen, you're going to have more of a chance to see all of the things from every Pixar film that's ever been made that we've planted in the antique store. We made this film to be on the big screen. Watching this in IMAX is just probably just a, a visual treat. Let's kaboom. Hey, thanks for watching. Did you know that the first feature film created solely with computer-generated imagery, CGI, was Toy Story from 1985? Over 800,000 hours of mathematical equations went into the film, which works out to be more than a week of computer time for every second on the screen. Hmm. Do you like my shirt? You can get one for yourself in the link in the description.